Hey, I'm Greg. And I'm Billy. And we're the Fuji Guys. Fuji Guys have a great video today. It's our first look at our brand new XE1 camera. The XE1, Billy, is our second camera now to introduce to take the XF interchangeable lenses. That's correct. Uh, you could kind of call it the baby brother to the X Pro One because it is smaller and lighter and less expensive. We are going to go through, as this video says, a first look. So we're going to go through the top, side, bottom, show you all the differences and uh, really exciting camera. Basically just what I want to say top line though is it is the same X-Trans APS-C size sensor, same processor and of course same lens set that you're using on the X-Pro1. So from an image quality size, uh, perspective rather, it is the same as an X-Pro1. Smaller, lighter, less expensive. Of course there's other features and design factors that we want to discuss in this video. So Billy? Yeah, absolutely, Greg. And we're showing here the black version, but there's also, of course, the uh, silver and black version, similar to the X100 yeah. uh, style and looks as so well. So if we look so. at the X Pro 1, which was an all black body, um, that XE1 is available in that style, but there's also the black and chrome version, which is more similar to our X100 camera as That's well. correct. Yeah. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at the uh, XE1 camera. Again, Greg showed you the uh, lens, the, that little button in the front allows you to uh, interchange, you know, with whatever XF lenses that we have. This cam is available in actually a, a kit lens as well. It's a zoom, zoom lens. Uh, so that's just that button to release that. On the other side of the camera, there is the uh, focus selector. You have your manual, uh, continuous and also your single autofocus options. Uh, there is a little grip similar to the X Pro one, so mm -hmm. it actually makes it easier to hold. In fact, this, the whole cam itself is about 30% smaller mm -hmm. than the X Pro one, but Very having nice that grip well. there gives it a good uh, way to, to actually hold the camera more steady. You have the LED light lamp in the front that allows you to help you assist in focusing in low light situations. So that's just the, the front side of the camera. You notice that uh, there's also the XE1 logo right in front right. now, mm -hmm. uh, where before there wasn't really much. Okay, so if we take a look at the side of this camera, uh, there is, um, of course, the attachment for your um, you know, strap. Uh, that's on both sides of the camera, but uh, there's also a little door cover. If we open that up, we have access to the USB cable. Uh, there's also access to the uh, mini HDMI connection, so you can actually hook it up to a TV and play back your HD photos and, 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 and uh, sorry, HD video and photos. There's also now a mic input, and that allows you to, to connect an external microphone. Uh, the software does uh, in the camera does allow you to adjust the, the microphone um, volume manually as well, which is a great addition to this style of camera, which makes it a great video style mm -hmm. camera too. Uh, in addition to that port, it also can act as um, a port to connect a, a remote release so that you, know, you can trigger the camera with an optional accessory uh, remotely, as well as possibly uh, allow for things like an intervalometer so that mm -hmm. you can do uh, you know, um, interval shooting uh, with, that, with this particular model. Okay? Now on the other side of the camera, there really isn't anything else other than that little uh, strap connector right there. If we take a look at the top of the camera, um, it looks very similar to the X Pro One. You can see there's the uh, EV controls. Uh, you have the function button. You got your on and off switch right there. It turns it on and off within you know a second, uh, or even half a second in the uh, in the uh, quick startup mode. You got the shutter release button. It also has the threads so that right. you can connect a, a manual cable release. So if you didn't want to do the electronic version, you can also have that there. You got, of course you have the uh, shutter dial. It's a, a mechanical dial that adjusts from the A, which is automatic, to the various different shutter speeds, all the way down to a T, uh, which basically goes between half a second to 30 second. And then you have a bulb mode, which gives you, you know, a maximum of 60 minutes uh, of long exposure. Uh, right beside it, you have the hot shoe. It's a TTL support. Supports you know Fuji's uh, extensive uh, flash options. You know we have here, of course, the EF X20 flash, and it will work perfectly with this cam. Of course, you have the EF20 uh, and EF42 yep. flash. Uh, just in front of that, you have two dots, and that's actually the left and right stereo microphone. The camera, of course, does record full HD video. Um, and right beside that, you'll see there's a little uh, cover there, and actually that's the flash, so it pops up and kind of moves forward, so it passes. So that's the difference between the Expo one. It does is that it does offer the uh, a built-in flash. 
Okay, so that's just a top look of the camera. If we take a look at the uh, bottom quickly, you can see you have your, of course, uh, tripod socket. It's a standard socket. You have the battery door cover, and flipping that open allows you to access the uh, lithium battery. It uses the same batteries as the X-Pro one, which is perfect. And, of course, that's the same slot where you can insert your SD, SDHC, SDXC card. Okay, now let's take a look at the... Um, Back of the camera now, of course, you have the LCD screen. It's a 2.8 LCD screen similar to that of the X100. If you look at the control layout, it, it is very similar to the X Pro 1 in terms of the button designs. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll just point out each one, as you can see. Um, first off, you have the playback button. It allows you to toggle between you know, the shooting and the playback mode. You got the drive button, which gives you access to you know, the different shooting modes, like high-speed continuous shooting modes, the bracketing modes, as well as the ability to shoot a panoramic or even uh, do vi HD videos on that. You have your AE button, which is your auto exposure button. You can adjust that. You have your auto focus uh, selector, so you can change the you know 49 different points on the screen there. And um, it also these buttons here acts as uh, in playback mode, of course, a delete button, your zoom out and zoom in button. Right. Okay. Right on top, you have the EVF. Um, so one of the main differences, of course, is that it only offers an EVF and not an a EVF and OVF option. Um, but what we've now included, of course, is the diopter adjustment, which is great um, so that you don't have to, unlike the Expo one purchase, you know, add-on corrector uh, lenses. You have your eye sensor that automatically switches between the LCD and the uh, EVF automatically. You can also configure that, of course, to what you like. You have the pop-up flash button. That's what I pushed earlier to get the pop-up flash. You have the view mode, and that toggles between the different um, um, uh, display, whether you want the LCD, the EVF, or have the eye sensor operate that for you. Uh, you have your command dial. The dial looks very similar to that of the X10 dial. It allows you to adjust you know, one-third stops in, in your aperture or shutter uh, whatnot. Right below that, you have a little micro, uh, sorry, the okay. speaker now. Um, you also have the directional pad. The directional pad uh, allows you to navigate the menu systems. Uh, it also doubles up as a macro button, so if you want to do close-up macros with this camera, uh, unlike a DSLR, you know, where you, you can't do very close-up macros, you have to buy a macro lens, you can with these cameras, mm -hmm. which is great. So that's how you enable that. And of course, you've got your standard menu OK button, so like the Enter button to, um, to accept uh, your options when you select things within the menu. Uh, you got your display back button, and that toggles to different displays. You got your grid line displays, your information, uh, even a custom display that allows you to fully customize what you want on on the camera itself. Um, right beside, of course, you got the A E L A E F button, and that's your auto exposure lock, auto focus lock. You can configure it to how you like to operate it, whether it controls both or one or the other. Uh, you also have the Q button, and that's just a quick access button to the most commonly used functions. Uh, it allows you to control things like the ISO, the uh, resolution, the sharpness, dynamic range, certain things that, that you can actually adjust that you want to do constantly uh, without having to actually go into the main menu of the camera. Yeah, and everyone loved that, uh, that design feature on the X-Pro1, and of course, just using the directional pad to get to one of those settings is one thing, and then you're just using this dial here to zip through all your options. It's it's just so natural when it you're is. using the camera to have that. And and that bump is kind of nice because it does allow you to put your thumb right there, and yeah. it, it kind of keeps it from uh, sliding off, mm -hmm. unlike the X100. Uh, you also have a little light LED light there that just blinks when the camera is either writing to the memory or writing to the card. So it's just, uh, or, it's, or, it's, or it blinks when the flash is recharging internally yeah. to allow you let you know when the flash is ready it's, to shoot. It's useful when you're using the high speed shooting modes or what have you, when the buffer is trying to catch up with uh, the number of frames you've shot. Billy, there's just one more thing that I'll mention about yeah. that, that EVF. You mentioned that it's different because we have the uh, the diopter built in, but it is actually a new EVF, an improved EVF that we had over the X100 yes. or the X Pro One. So yeah, it uh, it uses a 2.36 million dots OLED display, which is the organic LED display, and it allows for higher contrast, better color reproduction, deeper blacks. So it really is great for, for, for taking photos now. And so even though the OVF is no longer available on this particular model, it is almost double the resolution. Mm -hmm. So it makes it very easy to, to even manually focus with this camera to, to ensure things are in focus, as well as when you check colors, that they're a lot more accurate as well. 
So that's a good uh, a new up update on the X-E1 camera. So that's just a quick look around this camera. Um, it's almost now my one of my favorite cameras to have because it's a, <laughs> to me it's a perfect size. I, I found that the Expo one was slightly larger for my hands. However, there's always customers who uh, prefer this the larger size of the yeah, Expo one. Yeah, and if you one. own an Expo one already and uh, you're you're anxious and eager to build on your lens selection. Of course, we have announced a lens roadmap that tells uh, our customers of the next uh, several lenses that we're bringing out. Uh, this makes for a great second body. If you're shooting professionally with the X-Pro1, it's always great to have a backup camera that accepts the same lenses. So we assume that a number of you X-Pro1 users are going to um, eagerly await the arrival of this one due to its uh, lower si uh, smaller size and lower cost as well. Billy, that's a great first overview. We are going to have other videos Absolutely. about this. Uh, we want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow Billy on Twitter. And so that's the first look, but stay tuned for more information on the XE1. Until then, I'm Greg. And I'm Billy. And we're the Fuji guys. Thank you.